What would you do if you find yourself alone in Wuhan, China? And realize that you've been infected by the coronavirus. That is exactly what happened to Connor Reed, a 25-year-old expat from Wales. Connor has worked in a school in Wuhan, for almost a year. In November he became the first British man to catch the coronavirus. From coughs and pains to burning up and spending the night in hospital, here's how he beat the illness that is sweeping the globe. This is Connor Reed's diary. Day 1, Monday, November 25th. I have a cold. I'm sneezing and my eyes are a bit bleary. It isn't bad enough to keep me off work. I arrived in this country to teach English as a foreign language, but now I'm a manager at a school in Wuhan, the city in central China where I have lived for the past seven months. I speak Mandarin well, and the job is interesting. My cold shouldn't be very contagious, so I have no qualms about going to work. And I live alone, so I'm not likely to give it to anyone. There hasn't been anything in the news here about viruses. I have no cause for concern. It's just a sniffle. Hi, and welcome. This is Braino, the explainer. Do you have a lot of questions you'd like to ask? Are you curious about nature, science, and technology? Then you've come to the right channel. Together we will explore the answers you've been seeking, in a fun and informative way. Day 2. I have a sore throat. Remembering what my mum used to do when I was a child, I mix myself a mug of honey and hot water. It does the trick. Day 3. I don't smoke and I hardly ever drink. But it's important to me to get over this cold quickly, so that I can stay healthy for work. For medicinal purposes only, I put a splash of whiskey in my honey drink. I think it's called a hot toddy. Day 4, I slept like a baby last night. Chinese whiskey is evidently a cure for all known ailments. I have another hot toddy in the evening. Day 5. I'm over my cold. It really wasn't anything. Day 7. I spoke, too soon. I feel dreadful. This is no longer just a cold. I ache all over and my head is thumping. My eyes are burning and my throat is constricted. The cold has traveled down to my chest and I have a hacking cough. This is flu, and it's going to take more than a mug of hot honey, with or without the magic whiskey ingredient, to make me feel better. The symptoms hit me this afternoon, like a train. And unless there's an overnight miracle, I will not be going to work tomorrow. It's not just that I feel so ill, I really don't want to give this flu to any of my colleagues. Day 8. I won't be in work today. I've warned them I'll probably be off all week. Even my bones are aching. It's hard to imagine I'm going to get over this soon. Even getting out of bed hurts. I am propped up on pillows, watching TV and trying not to cough too much, because it is painful. Day 9. Even the kitten hanging around my apartment seems to be feeling under the weather. It isn't its usual lively self. And when I put down food it doesn't want to eat. I don't blame it, I've lost my appetite too. Day 10. I'm still running a temperature. I finished the quarter bottle of whiskey, and I don't feel well enough to go out and get any more. It doesn't matter. I don't think hot toddies were making much difference. Day 11. Suddenly, I'm feeling better physically, at least. The flu has lifted. But the poor kitten has died. I don't know whether it had what I've got, or whether cats can even get human flu. I feel miserable. Day 12. I've had a relapse. Just as I thought the flu was getting better, it has come back with a vengeance. My breathing is labored. Just getting up and going to the bathroom leaves me panting and exhausted. I'm sweating, burning up, dizzy and shivering. The television is on but I can't make sense of it. This is a nightmare. By the afternoon, I feel like I am suffocating. I have never been this ill in my life. I can't take more than sips of air, and when I breathe out, my lungs sound like a paper bag being crumpled up. This isn't right. I need to see a doctor. But if I call the emergency services, I'll have to pay for the ambulance call out myself. That's going to cost a fortune. I'm ill, but I don't think I'm dying, am I? Surely I can survive a taxi journey. I decide to go to Jiangnan University Hospital, because there are plenty of foreign doctors there studying. It isn't rational but, in my feverish state, I want to see a British doctor. My Mandarin is pretty good, so I have no language problem when I call the taxi. It's a 20-minute ride. As soon as I get there, a doctor diagnoses pneumonia. So that's why my lungs are making that noise. I am sent for a battery of tests lasting 6 hours. Day 13. I arrived back at my apartment late yesterday evening. The doctor prescribed antibiotics for the pneumonia, but I'm reluctant to take them. I'm worried that my body will become resistant to the drugs, 
and if I ever get really ill and need them, they won't work. I prefer to beat this with traditional remedies if I can. It helps, simply knowing that this is pneumonia. I'm only 25 and generally healthy. I tell myself, there's no reason for alarm. I have some tiger balm. It's like Vicks Vapor Rub on steroids. I pour some into a bowl of hot water, and sit with a towel over my head, inhaling the fumes. I'm going old school. And I've still got the antibiotics in reserve if I need them. Day 14. Boil a kettle. Add tiger balm. Towel overhead. Breathe for an hour. And repeat. Day 15. All the days are now blurring into one. Day 16. I phoned my mother in Australia. There was no point in calling her before now, she'd only worry and try to jump on a plane. That wouldn't work. It takes an age to get a visitor's visa to China. I'm glad to hear her voice, even if I can't do much more than croak, Mum, I feel so ill. Day 17. I am feeling slightly better but I don't want to get my hopes up yet. I've been here before. Day 18. My lungs no longer sound like bundles of broken twigs. Day 19. I am well enough to stagger out of doors to get more tiger bomb. My nose has cleared enough to smell what my neighbors are cooking. And I think I might have an appetite for the first time in nearly two weeks. Day 22. I was hoping to be back at work today, but no such luck. The pneumonia has gone but now I ache as if I've been run over by a steamroller. My sinuses are in agony, and my eardrums feel ready to pop. I know I shouldn't but I'm massaging my inner ear with cotton buds, trying to take the pain away. Day 24. Hallelujah. I think I'm better. Who knew flu could be as horrible as that, though? Day 36. A tip-off from a friend sends me hurrying to the shops. Apparently, the Chinese officials are concerned about a new virus that is taking hold in the city. There are rumors about a curfew or travel restrictions. I know what this will mean, panic buying in the shops. I need to stock up on essentials before everyone else does. Day 52. A notification from the hospital informs me that I was infected with the Wuhan coronavirus. I suppose I should be pleased that I can't catch it again, I'm immune now. However, I must still wear my face mask like everyone else if I leave the apartment, or risk arrest. The Chinese authorities are being very thorough about trying to contain the virus. Day 67. The whole world has now heard about coronavirus. I've told a few friends about it, via Facebook, and somehow the news got out to the media. My local paperback in North Wales, has been in touch with me. Maybe I caught the coronavirus at the fish market. It's a great place to get food on a budget, a part of the real Wuhan that ordinary Chinese people use every day. And I regularly do my shopping there. Since the outbreak became international news, I've seen hysterical reports, especially in the US media, that exotic meats such as bat and even koala are on sale at the fish market. I've never seen that. The only slightly weird sight I've seen is the whole pig and lamb carcasses for sale, with their heads on. Day 72, Tuesday, February 4th, it seems the newspapers think it's terrific that I tried to cure myself with hot toddies. I attempt to explain that I had no idea at the time, what was wrong with me. But that isn't what they want to hear. The headline in the New York Post says, UK teacher claims he beat coronavirus, with hot whiskey and honey. I wish, it had been that easy. And that, folks, was how Connor Reed survived the coronavirus. But remember he made a number of mistakes. 1. He didn't call a doctor immediately. 2. He didn't take the prescription drugs that the doctor told him to. And 3. He went outside by taxi while he was still sick. Thank you for being with us. And keep safe. If you've learned something new in this video, please give us a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching until next time.